John Akibua Uganda Gold Medal 1972 Munich Olympic 400 meter hurdles John Akibua was raised in a family of 43 children. His father had eight wives. He started his career as a short distance adult runner, but failed to qualify for the 1968 Olympic. His coach, a British born, Arnold Malcolm, introduced him to 400 meter hurdles. After finishing fourth in the 1970 Commonwealth Games, running the fastest time of 1971. He was not one of the favorite for the 1972 Summer Olympic in Munich. He had limited competitive experience. Nevertheless, he won the final, setting a world record time of 47 seconds, despite running on inside lane. He missed the 1973 Olympics, a showdown with United States rival Moses Edwin. Because of the boycott by Uganda and other African nations, as a police officer, he was promoted by Uganda President Idi Amin the Da and given a house as a reward for his athletic prowess. At the time when the regime of Idi Amin was collapsing, he fled the country to Kenya with his family, fearing fearing that he would be labeled as a collaborator. <clears throat> this was likely because he was from the Lango tribe. And at that time, many Langish were persecuted by Amin soldiers. In Kenya, Yona Kibua was placed into a refugee camp. He was fed by his shoe manufacturer, Puma, and lived in Germany, working for Puma for four years. He represented Uganda once again in the 1980 Summer Olympic. Later, he returned to Uganda and became a coach. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss your daily source of information on Uganda. Let me be clear and let's get started. Akibua died at the age of 49, survived by 11 children. He was given a state funeral. His nephew, Ace, an international footballer, David Obua, and his brother Lawrence Oguan, competed in the long jump and triple jump at the 1956 Olympics.
By the time he died, Akibua was a senior superintendent of police with the Uganda Police Force. I still remember the 1972 Summer Olympic in Munich, Germany. Some of his opposition in the 100 meter hurdles included people like Dave of Britain, the world record holder at the moment in time. Ralph Mann, an American. His only pair of running shoes was two years old, and one shoe was missing a spike, according to the information we got. was missing a spike. He was well built, six feet two inches, and weighing 170 pounds. In the six months before the Olympic Games, his training included wearing a vest weighted with 25 pounds in lead as he ran 1,500 meters over five adults that were 42 inches high. The handle for his race were 36 inches. He did four sets of those repetitions twice a day, every day. <clears throat> the government, while celebrating his achievement, did restrict his movement. He was not allowed to take his wife and children with him to international competition. The government of Idi Amin, that da, was afraid that it would defect. They cut off twice a year training trips to Germany. It reached a point where he would stay at home and do nothing. The government of Idi Amin was afraid that if they allow his family to attend his international game, sure, he was going to defect. And they restricted his movement. They restricted his movement. One could say the man himself was living in a well-created prison due to state fear. And according to the information we have, what he did then was to stay home listening to Diana Rose music. That's very interesting because music clear your mind in time of happiness and sadness. His friends used to warn him that he was in danger and he admitted that he had gone under a lot of suffering that at one moment he didn't know anymore who his friends were. Believe me, we have a lot of jealous people within our society. In Uganda, people who are jealous can send others to kill for them. That feeling still remains and roam the street of Uganda today. 
Uganda was a prison. Amin wanted to put him in jail several times. But he failed to do so because Akibu was a prominent person with his wing spread around the globe. In 1979, when Tanzanian troops were about to capture Kampala, Akibua, his wife and children fled to Kenya. As a police officer under Idi Amin Dada, he was jailed for three weeks. and was almost sent back to Uganda. And if he was sent back to Uganda, he would have been killed by a main soldiers. At that moment, West Germany and Puma, the German sport shoe company, whose shoe he wore, helped him to get his freedom back. He sent his wife and children to Germany and he joined them there later. When he decided to check on his family in Uganda, he learned that five of his brothers and sisters had been killed. His father, a county chief, died in 1965. His house was destroyed by bombs, looted, and his Olympic gold medal was gone, stolen. Imagine Ugandan stealing from fellow Ugandans. It's a sad story. And that sad story seems to be following us wherever we go and in whatever we do. We have lost it all. We don't know where we are going and we don't know where we are up to today. When we were growing up as a teenager, the glory of our sportmen was our motivation. The glory of our sons and daughters motivated us as teenagers to start thinking to become like them to make us participate in sports I still remember when I was in primary school, a lot of our people got the courage to join sport because of this man and women of glory in the sport world. As a teenager, I can still remember. We had a lot of talented men and women 
from northern Uganda. Those who motivated me and I wanted to be like them are people like Akibu in sports and will hard people like Otuno, Air Force pilot, like Obonyo, Air Force pilot, like Oyuelo, the first Ugandan gold medals in heavyweight, heavyweight boxing, Commonwealth Games. Those are the people. We were looking at them as kids. We wanted to be exactly like them because they were our hero. And that feeling of admiring them ended when I mean took over power in 1971. It sent us fear, shock, and people were running like mad. And those memories don't just go away. Uganda had abandoned talent. Some are still outside there. Some are still inside there. Some had been killed. Some are being kidnapped. Some are being murdered. And one day, the youth and the people of Uganda should come out and say, that enough is enough. We won the glory we had when we got independent back so that our children, our grandchildren can admire the achievement of our people so that they could also follow their footsteps it is very nice, it's a very nice feeling when you hear during our time, everybody say, I want to be like a Kibua. I want to be like Obonyo, the Air Force pilot. I want to be like Otuno, the Air Force pilot. I want to be like Oyuelo, the boxer who was born in Gulu. That is something that can free you from whatever you are doing in a good time and a bad time. As a teenager at that moment, those names I mentioned, were my favorites. And Akibu was my favorite athletic runner. When he won the Munich Olympic Games and the next station for him was the African Games of 1973 in Lagos. Africa, great Bill Koske of Kenya made it to the final of the men 400 adults. And also in the final lineup was Akibu and he won easily. Akibua won 
in the very first time of 48.54, the first time ever run in the hurdles race. Koske of Kenya grabbed the silver. Anayo silver grabbed the bronze medals. Ayo is also from Uganda. We all know that the golden son of Uganda, John Akibua, was ranked among the world top 10 during the 1974. In 1976, he became the main highlight star at the German international meet else in Dusselberg when he won in both 400 flat and the 400 meter hurdles. John Akib Boer is a man who put Uganda on the world map with his Olympic gold medal. We admire you, brother. We admire you. Even though you are gone, those of you who saw us the light that we could be, whoever we want to be, those I mentioned their names, they are gone. Some are still alive, but they will always be a part of us because you people made us who we are today. And I'm very grateful to all of you. And let's hope those of you who are no longer with us, you rest in peace. Thank you for listening. And remember, I will be back.